Okay, in the second part of Stalling's topological proof of Grishko's theorem, we'll make our main construction, and the main construction involves an ingredient called binding ties. One of the main ideas is that these binding ties work, the other is they exist. So, what is our goal? We just recall, we had the following setup. We had a map f from z to x, and x contained a pair of spaces x1 and x2, and z contained a pair of spaces z1, z2, x1 intersection x2 was a single point. Okay, This corresponded to a free product. And uh, we had some nice properties, which is we had each component of z1 intersection z2 is contractible. In addition to these, all these spaces are very nice. I'm not going to keep saying this. I'll call this property star. Okay, So they are path connectedness implies connectedness and vice versa that is they're locally path connected etc etc they are nice complexes okay so each component of z1 stars intersection z2 is contractible this is the property we had our goal was we extend we want z prime containing z zi prime containing zi and an extension of f of f such that well one thing is that star holds for z1 prime and z2 prime that is each component of their intersection is contractible and the second thing we needed is that mod of z1 prime intersection z2 prime this mod is number of components is strictly less than that of z1 intersection z2 okay so if, of course, Z1 intersection Z2 had only one component, okay, we are done. Otherwise, we shall prove this. Okay, so this is the main uh, goal for this stage. To see this goal, the main construction we use is a simple one due to Whitehead. We will attach a two cell along a path gamma which maps i to some space y so i is the interval 0 1 for a space y y will be a nice space and as a consequence we'll get a nice space for x as well i mean after attaching as well what is this operation we have the space y here's the space y and here's the two cell Two cell is going to be a disk, but I'm going to write it in a particular way. I'll take a pair of vertices and I will use two different colors for two different intervals on the boundary. Okay, much the same as these. So this is a two disk. Let me keep the interior ambiguous. So this is D2. And suppose I have a path here with endpoints specified. The path need not even be embedded. What I do is identify this with this. Okay. So in words, boundary D2 is I union J. Okay. I J closed intervals. And boundary I equals boundary J, which is their intersection. Okay. So we have this situation. So given this setup, what we do is we construct the space y prime, which is y, disjoint union d2 by an equivalence relation with tilde generated by identifying any point y in the interval i, which you remember is contained in boundary of d2, which is equivalent to its image, gamma of y. Okay. So this means we are simply gluing the disk along the interval to get a single piece here, uh, roughly speaking, what we get is something like this, okay, where we have a uh, disk attached here. Now you simply observe the following y prime deformation retracts to y, it contains y and it deformation retracts, simply push down. Okay, this is a fairly simple observation, this is at the basis of it. Okay. So now we can make this construction 
but along what paths that is the next part of the story so the paths we will choose are the following so what we'll do is the following so we so we do this construction with gamma uh, binding tie okay and what is a binding tie let me write down the properties of this first of all that is so we take a path gamma mapping the interval 0 1 okay and its boundary to the space z with the boundary going to z1 intersection z2 okay so the boundary points are all red okay so this means that gamma is a path from 0 1 to z boundary of gamma is goes to z1 intersection z2 will be only considering such paths is a binding tie if the following happens so we have one condition the first condition is that it's monochromatic so gamma of 0 1 is contained in xi for some i okay this condition we will be calling monochromatic Yeah. The second condition is the tie condition, which is that gamma of 0 and gamma of 1, you recall they are in z1 intersection uh, z2, sorry, they are in z1 intersection z2, are in different components. So, in our example so far, our space is a graph. But in general, path components and components will be the same thing, are in different components of Z1 intersection Z2. This is the condition which we'll call a tie. And finally, the binding tie, sorry, we'll call that the condition being null. What is that? You observe the loop F of gamma. Okay. Why is this a loop? It's because f of gamma, so this loop has to be null homotopic. Okay, so this is the loop f of gamma because you notice that f of gamma of 0 and f of gamma of 1 both belong to x1 intersection x2, which is a point. So it's actually a loop. So this is null homotopic. So this is a loop, it's null homotopic as a loop, okay? And in fact, it's a consequence of Van Kempen's theorem that this is equivalent to saying it's null homotopic in Xi, the Xi to which it belongs, okay? So the binding tie is something that satisfies all these conditions, okay? And what we will show is that we can always find such a binding tie step by step. But first we'll see that when we attach along a binding tie, we get the result okay so let's go back to our picture this is a slightly changed version of our picture the change is small but it's to make the picture easier to draw let me draw in dark green what I pretend is a binding tie okay so this is gamma it's a dark version of green okay so so lemma attaching along a binding tie tie gives z prime z i prime and f as required okay i won't see this in detail let me draw the picture the picture makes this absolutely clear okay so what do we want okay so let me just note with the proof namely what is going to what is z going to be z is of course going to be the result of attaching a disk but i'm going to color it in a certain way i'm going to make this red and i'm going to make this region here green okay so remember z prime is the union of z union d2 
where D2 is attached. Okay, so this deformation retracts. This is true and it's the easiest of the conditions to achieve. But in addition to that, what I'll take is that, so without loss of generality, gamma of uh, i is contained in x1. So then you let z1 uh, equal to z, sorry, z1 prime equal z1 union d2. So what we are doing is we are coloring everything green but more surprisingly z2 prime is z2 union j. Okay. And now the conditions work like magic. Okay. So f extends. So zi prime is mapped by f into xi. Okay. So this is a sort of surprising part. So let's see what we are claiming here. We are claiming we can extend it so that this red part, this additional interval, is actually mapping to the single red point. Okay. And everything inside the disk is mapping into the part X1. Well, why can we do it? This is the crucial point here. The crucial point here is on the interval i the map is already defined. On j we will just define it so that this happens. Okay, So define f restricted to j maps j to the point x1 intersection x2. Okay. So the entire interval is mapped to a single point. So now what we have is a map on the boundary of the disk. And when does a map on the boundary of the disk extend to the disk? Exactly when the boundary maps to a null homotopic loop. Well, that was the null condition of the binding ties. Okay. So if we just go back quickly, the null condition is what lets the map extend. By the way, this didn't use monochromatic. The null condition used it. But in the case it's monochromatic by Van Kampen's theorem, we can extend it so that it's completely contained in Xi. So on I, it's already contained in Xi and we can also extend it so that it's contained in Xi. So, so that means that we have the condition that Z1 prime is, which includes the whole disk, is mapped into this and Z2, which is Z2 prime, which includes this interval, is mapped into X2 because the rest of Z2 was already there. And uh, finally, where did we use the other condition of the tie? Well, notice what happened to the number of components of Z1 prime intersection Z2 prime. These two points here, okay, so these two points here, these are now, now in the same component. of Z1 prime intersection Z2 prime. So this is the situation we have managed to achieve. We managed to actually decrease the number of components. That was the tie condition. The null condition allowed us to extend the map. And of course, being monochromatic allowed us to extend the map in this correct way and extend the spaces Z1 and Z prime as this. So this is the key inductive step, which lets us decrease the number of components. It's a beautiful idea. Uh, the only remaining ingredient now is to find show that in fact these binding ties actually exist. Yeah, there will be a couple of very crucial ideas there. That will be the final part of this series.